Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of my Elden Ring walkthrough. I hope everybody's doing well. I know that I am. And today, we're going to go through a catacomb, a cave, and take out that encampment that we've seen in the last episode. But before we do, let's go ahead and look at our equipment. I went ahead and I equipped a torch. And I also made 20 bone darts. We're going to rest real quick at this grace and talk to Melina. This tiny golden aura is the grace of the earth tree. This light once shone in the eyes of your tarnished brethren, but now it is all that guides you. Also, I hear you can see them, can't you? The rays of grace that guide you through your burden. Upon the cliff in Castle Stormvale, is a shard bearer, a demigod, who inherited a fragment of the shattered Elden Ring. If the rays of grace signal the castle, then the Elden Ring beckons you. As an ally by pact, I pray that you are fit to face the challenge presented by the ring. All right, she disappears. And we're going to get out of this uh, chapel real quick, or church. Sorry, it's a church. Not sure what defines a, a chapel compared to a church, but I'm sure it's something. Pick up any of these earthly flowers whenever you see them. I know that I went over it in the last episode, but you can never have enough. You can take out these um, eagles. I think they're eagles. They look like it. Uh, get a flight pinion. You can use those to make uh, arrows. Right here we can examine this statue. It's going to point the way to our first uh, dungeon we're going to, which is going to be the catacombs. If we hop down, I know it looks like a long fall, and it is, but we won't die. We won't even take any damage. Elden Ring has a very generous fall um, meter. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. You, you can fall from really far and not take damage or die compared to any other Souls game. Over here we have uh, some nobles digging something up. Let's go ahead and kill them. And then I'm going to drink a flask real quick. And what I'm going to do is kill this noble and show everybody a really cool mechanic that Elden Ring has. So whenever you kill a group of enemies, you will get your flasks back. Whether it's the Crimson Flask or it's the Cerulean Flask. So whatever you're using, you're going to get those back. Now, depending on the size and of the group of enemies that you kill is how many flasks you're going to get back. That's a smaller group, so we would probably only get one or two flasks back. If it's a whole encampment, you'll probably get all of your flasks back from the crimson to the cerulean uh, tier flasks. Grab these mushrooms. These mushrooms are going to be useful in making fire bombs later on. Go ahead and light this grace. We're not gonna sit at it. We're just gonna continue for. for ugh. We're gonna continue forward. Jeez, words, Mr. Wayne. Words. 
Off to the left, we're going to have a gargoyle that's going to attack us, but we also have one right in front of the chair. So just be very careful. If you hold your shield out, hit R2. They're very easy to stagger. But just be very careful. They do have a blood loss buildup. Oops. So see how that red bar uh, started filling up on my screen? That is the blood loss bar. Don't let that fill all the way up. Uh, it will take off a huge chunk of your health. It might even kill you. Get some root resin. Grab some Grave Glove Wart. So Grave Glove Wart is used to level up your Spear Ashes. We can't do that just yet. But you still want to grab as much as you can. We're going to examine this summoning pool and activate it. Over here you want to run all the way to the left. There's going to be some guys that drop down. Grab that Grave Violet. That's some crafting material. This guy's backing up because he wants to throw darts at us. Of course. <laughs> as soon as I go to hit him, then he s swings. That's how it always works out. Grab some more Grave Glove Wart. And then up here, we can see a gargoyle hanging want to knock them down take them out there and then right here we have a pillar spewing out flames the easiest way to do this is just kind of guess when it's about to turn off and then be very careful when you come over here because there's a second one uh, and if you run into these, they do a ton of damage uh, that just might kill you. We're going to run behind this pillar here. We'll smack it. It'll go down. And then we can pick up this item. item and this is the Prattling Pate Hello. So if we use that, it'll uh, do a hello. Like we, it's not a gesture. It actually says hello. And then roll. <laughs> it's so scary. This one I feel is harder to get to because I, I feel like there's a longer run than the first one. So right here we have five gargoyles. We want to take one on at a time. Not all five. You will most definitely die if you do. And if you don't, you'll be very lucky. A lot of new players, they'll see that item, run over there, grab the item, and then five of these gargoyles will uh, come and just kind of kill them not kind of kill them will kill them because they're not expecting it they're not expecting a bunch of gargoyles to be right here So we get some smoldering butterflies. We can use those and the mushrooms to make fire bombs. And then right here, we'll get some ghost glove wart. 
So there's two types of spirit ashes. There's the regular basic spirit ashes, and then there's the elite, more powerful spirit ashes. And the ghost glove wart is what you're going to use to level up your more elite go or more elite spirit ashes. Whew, that was a mouthful. Let's go climb up this ladder here. I didn't pull my torch out here because it's just not dark enough to really need it. Right here, be careful. You want to make sure that you take that guy out. And the guy across the way is going to run at us. All right, we'll take care of him. And then we have the same situation as when we first came into this catacomb. Off to the right, though, is going to be the gargoyle. And then um, at the end of the hallway, there's going to be another gargoyle to throw some stuff at you. So just get this gargoyle's attention. Pull him back. Hold your shield out and kind of get some cover. That way the one that's throwing um, throwing knives at you is not going to hit you. And you can focus on just that gargoyle. Now this one seems to always de-aggro, for me at least. So I just kind of sneak up behind him and get a free backstab. I mean, why not, right? We get the Wandering Noble Ashes, which in my opinion is just a trash tier ash, like of not Ash of War, but uh, Spirit Ash. We will be getting um, an Ash of War in this episode as well. Right here's one more Gargoyle. This is going to be our last Gargoyle that we have to kill. So we'll take him out. Grab some Grave Glove Wart. And right here, we're going to pull this lever. But whenever you pull it, it's going to say somewhere a heavy door has opened. If you try to roll, swing your weapon by pressing R1, R2, or even L1, L2, you're not going to be able to do anything. That uh, message kind of prevents you from doing anything. So hit X to get rid of the message so you can swing your sword in um, hold your shield up and whatnot. It's really annoying, and I think FromSoft should really patch that out. It's been in the game since day one, and it's just so obnoxious. It has caused way too many deaths that I'm willing to admit. It is sad the amount of deaths that I've had because of that stupid message after pulling a lever. Um, real quick, we're going to level up, but we're going to talk to Melina real quick first. Me? I'm searching for my purpose, given to me by my mother inside the earth tree, long ago, for the reason that I yet live, burned and bodiless. There is something for which I must apologize. I've acted the finger maiden, yet can offer no guidance. I am no maiden. My purpose was long ago lost. Let's go ahead and level up from Melina. Shall I turn your runes to strength? Let my hand rest upon you. For but a moment, share them with me. Your thoughts, your ambitions, the principles you would follow. So we're going to put two points into strength, and this will allow us to use the Lord Sworn's greatsword. All right, let's go into our equipment. We're going to equip the Lord Sworn's Greatsword. And if you notice 
off to the right side um, at the bottom where character status is, it'll say heavy load. So we're over encumbered and we're gonna fat roll. So what we can do is press square on our helmet and take it off. We'll be able to put that back on probably by the end of the video, but for now we have to have it off if we want to be able to roll efficiently. Right here, if you have trouble with this boss, some summon somebody in. The way you do that is by crafting up a few of your For Calling Finger Remedies and then going to Multiplayer and using the For Calling Finger Remedies and you'll, you should see a couple signs here, maybe even over here if uh, somebody used their furled finger and uh, put their sign down. But you should see the summoning signs over here. This boss isn't too bad, but you could struggle with it very easily. So let's go ahead and grab our lone wolf ashes. They're not going to do too much damage to this boss. This is the Erd Tree Burial Watchdog. Even though that it is definitely a watch cat and not a watchdog. I like to jump and smack this cat if the dog would get out of my way yeah that's unfortunate the wolves were literally in my way got a stagger on it that's good get in front of them hit r1 for uh a crit on them do another jumping attack He's going to spew out some fire. I'm just going to run away. The wolves kind of get in the way whenever... Oh, wow. Wolf killed it. Nice. Good job, bud. Uh, but the wolves get in the way whenever you're trying to avoid the fire. Okay, so we also have the Noble Sorcerer Ashes. It is, again, a trash tier summon. But if you want to summon it in, go ahead. It's only going to shoot... Uh, glintstone pebble and it's very slow at doing that so yeah not a very good uh summon right here this string of light will allow you to go back to the entrance of the catacomb if you want this happens in every dungeon that is like a catacomb or a cave just a small dungeon when you get to your legacy dungeons like boss bosses uh, that will not be there. This is just for smaller dungeons. We don't need to use it because the entrance is just across the way. It's really not that far. We'll go ahead and use a crimson flask. I legitimately have to fight with myself. Uh, mentally not to call it an Estus flask. Get ourselves a Golden Ruin 1. Take this guy out. We're going to get our Crimson Flask back that we just used anyways. Get an Herba. We're going to rest at the bon... Or not bonfire. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, uh, we're going to rest at the site of grace in our next um, cave that we're going to. Well, one was a catacomb. Next one is going to be a cave. But just kind of follow this back. You're going to hop back over this. Follow this structure. Or not structure, but uh, I don't know. Uh, Cliffside, I guess. <laughs> and then you're going to see the Church of Ella. Instead of going inside the Church of Ella, we're going to go over to the path.
Grab some more early flower. Get a backstab on this fool. Another backstab. Let's kind of follow this path. Once you get to... Oh, nice. We got a Lord Sworn Straight Sword. It's actually not a bad sword to have. If you're feeling more comfortable with the uh, straight swords compared to the great swords, use that. You can always farm these guys for their sword. You could even get two of them in uh, dual wield uh, the Lord Sworn's uh, great swords. Or not great swords, uh, straight swords. Got some bolts. Come on, bud. There we go. Got some more mushrooms over here. Or at least one. We're going to pull out our torch. And then we're going to light this grace. And sit at it. We're not going to level up at all. We'll level up at the end of the video. And then activate that summoning pool. And then right down here, we're going to have a ton of wolves. What I like to do is try to take out one at a time if I can. Oh my goodness. Just be very careful. The uh, big mama Jama is going to try to come at us. Just take your time with her. Not like me. jumps back a lot so just whenever you have an opportunity to hit her that's when you want to hit her and we have one more wolf i believe yep he's down there so if he wants to come up here fine for now i'm gonna grab this green moss or cave moss i mean the moss is green but <laughs> it's called cave moss all right finally came up to us And then right here, we get our first cracked pot. Good stuff, good stuff. Some more thin beast bones. And then over here, we're going to have two wolves. Both of them are laying down. Wait for him to jump at us. Just missed him. Right here, we get a glowstone. So if you don't have a torch or a, a side lantern, which like goes on your hip, you can always throw the glowstone down and it'll illuminate a good portion of an area. Right here we get a golden ruin. And then we get some silver fireflies, which are crafting material. So grab some more cave moss. Be grabbing the uh, cave moss because you can make poison remedies out of, out of it. Or bolas, as they're called in Elden Ring. So up there is the way out of this cave. We want to go down. I'm going to use a crimson flask here. And then before we go in, I'm going to go to my equipment. Take off the bone darts. 
and go ahead and put on the lone wolf ashes a little closer so we don't have to worry about switching back and forth from the lone wolf ashes and then like no bone darts so in here this boss is extremely easy uh if you don't feel confident with how many flasks you have you can always go sit at the grace and then run back here and fight the boss but i feel very confident in taking this boss out the wolves will do the majority of the work here this boss just cannot handle the uh wolves it, they're just too aggressive for him I mean we haven't even been hit yet so if that tells anybody anything I had to say something <laughs> I had to say something so we could get hit huh uh, so we get the flame drake talisman for killing that boss pretty easy boss we could even use a flask if we want to Right here we get another string of light that'll bring us to the entrance, but again, we don't need to use it. We're right there. Why use it? Thought there was some cave moss there that was going to pick it up, but I already got it. I already got it. We're not going to rest at the grace. We'll rest at the grace when we get to the encampment. I'm going to run over here. We're going to kill this guy. There's another guy over there. So if you go down that way, that's going to lead to the path that we were on earlier. We're not going to go down that path. It'll be easier just to follow the cliffside here and take this guy out real quick. go and be sure to pick up some of the root resin nice we get um, some armor from them the root resin can be used to make uh, different um, like salves for your weapon to make it like a, a fire damaging weapon for a little bit or poison weapon for a little bit all kinds of stuff like that So we just kind of skipped over the camp like we did in the last video. And if we come over here, we can rest at the grace, get our flasks back. And if everybody notices as we were walking in, we can actually summon in our wolves here. Now we're not going to do it just yet because we can still um, kill a lot of these enemies before we have to use our wolves. Get a backstab on this guy. Again, be careful for the guy with the horn. You don't want him to alert the whole camp. And nice, we get a smithing stone. These guys do, all of them do have a chance of dropping smithing stones. So keep that in mind. This is the gate front ruins. Obviously, it just said it, but just reconfirming. get some bolts and then we'll pick up three ruin fragments not really useful at the moment sneak up behind this guy then we have the guy over there with the horn we're going to sneak up behind him and get a backstab. Hopefully we don't alert the guy sitting down. Nope, we did not. Take this guy out. Just be very careful for that knight. You do not want to alert him just yet. We will fight him, but we'll fight him when we have more room to fight him and 
less enemies. That way we feel a little safer and we'll bring out our wolves and we'll just have all the help in the world. We're going to hide in this bush. Wait for this guy to patrol back. I was hoping to stagger him, but I guess we can't stagger him. He's got too much poise. Grab that mushroom. Just always be looking out for those glowing skulls, too. They're going to be very useful in grabbing some uh, extra runes. We're going to wait for this guy to path backwards that way. Or backwards. <laughs> Do you even know what you're talking about today, Mr. Wayne? I guess not. Um, to backtrack uh, from where he was so that we can take out the guy with the spear and shield. He's got a weird pathing animation there, doesn't he? He's going to turn around. He's going to be like, what just happened? Take him out. Nice, we got another smithing stone. It's not a guarantee that you're going to get um, that smithing stone from him. A lot of RNG in this game. Uh, for folks that don't know what RNG is, that's random number generator. Uh, that's just saying the randomness of a game. You never know what you're going to get. So over here, we're crouching. And the reason why is because we have a group of enemies right over there. And we really don't want to fight all of them and this huge knight. So he's going to run at us. We're going to kind of pull him back this way. He'll stop in a minute and walk a little bit. And then he'll run at us and... All that good stuff. Ah. There we go. I was hoping to get that critical, but I was in like such a weird position that it did not work the way that I thought it was going to. All right, right here, we're going to just take out all of this stuff. We can be kind of reckless. Don't be so reckless that you die, but you can run in here, take out these guys, even get hit a few times. You'll get your flasks back because we're taking out a whole encampment. You can use all your flasks and you'll get all four of them back. So... You don't have to worry about not having flasks after taking these guys out. Holy moly, a third smithing stone. I would say we could go level up our sword now. But the problem with that is, is not everybody's going to have uh, the same amount of smithing stones. And I don't find that to be fair for me to go level up my weapon and nobody else can because they don't have the smithing stones. So real quick. If you ever want to get rid of your summon and they're just getting in, getting in the way and you need to get somewhere, you can go down to where your summons are, hit square, and send them back home. So then they're not in the way anymore and you can do what you need to do. Right here, we're going to open up this door. And then we'll open up this chest and we're going to get our first Ash of War. This is Storm Stomp. It's an alright Ash of War, at least for the start of the game. It's alright. And we're also going to get the Whetstone Knife. So let's go ahead and go to the next Grace. And I'll talk a little bit more about the Whetstone Knife and the uh, Ash of War. Well, the Whetstone Knife is... is 
part of the ashes of war so not really much to talk about so right here we want to follow this path this is the path from the grace that we rested at earlier so if you're lost you get turned around um just know we we came in from over here and fought all this stuff went down the stairs and then popped out over here and then off to the left is the, is the grace. And then if we travel down this road, off to the left, we're going to see another grace. So they're like right next to each other. Not far apart at all. Let's go ahead and rest at this grace. Talk a little bit about the ashes of war. Um, level up and then we'll end the video here. Go down to Ashes of War. We're going to get a pop-up. So, whenever you want to put an Ash of War on your weapon, shield, or torch, you have to have an Ash of War that is compatible with it. You can't just put any Ash of War on your weapon or shield. Um, you know, and it, it, it'll actually say it within the Ash of War what, it need, what it'll go to. Whether it's a shield or a bow or a sword of some sort. So the only thing we can put our new Ash of War Storm Stomp on is our Lord Sworn's Great Sword. Uh, now, it's a quality sword. Well, it's going to be a quality sword. Uh, originally, it was just a standard sword, which is better than our quality sword at the moment. But it, we will make it better by leveling up and upgrading our sword over time. So let's go ahead and put that on and you can switch it to standard if you like. But because we're going for a quality build, I'm going to put it on quality. Now, the more whetstones you get, the more opportunity or whetstone knives. Let me rephrase that. Whetstone knives you get the different stats you can put on there from like a quality to a strength build to a divine build and all of that stuff for your weapon. And we'll get into that as we get a little further into the walkthrough. For now, let's go ahead and level up. We're going to put 14 into endurance and then one into our decks. The reason I want to put some into endurance is because we need to be able to have a little bit of... Um, equip load so we can wear certain items and certain gear and stuff like that we don't want to always be over encumbered let's go ahead and level up now and then we can exit out of here and i'll i'll come over here and this is where we'll end the video so i want to start by telling everybody thank you so very much for stopping by it really means the world to me and i really appreciate it if you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. Let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. And like always, everybody, have a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. Mr. John Wayne, signing off.